Okay, so it's mostly going to be doing a bunch more examples of twisted Alexander polynomials and some interesting results and some questions that have come up. So you'll have some fodder. And the first one I wanted to talk about, talk some more about um, parabolic uh, SL to C. So let me remind you of uh, what I said last time about these things. First of all, we have these two bridge knots parameterized as A alpha theta, where um, zero less than theta less than alpha. Integers. So let's say alpha is 2n plus 1 because I'm going to use n. And then the knot group has this two generator presentation of the point 1 relator wx is y w. And let me write w a little differently than I did last time. Let me write it so that you could actually compute what it is. I'll write it as x to the epsilon 1, y to the epsilon n, and this, that n alpha minus 1 over 2, x to the epsilon 2, y to the epsilon n minus 2, and so on, up to x to the epsilon n y to the epsilon 1. So these exponents epsilon i are polydromic. Why does it work? So these x, f, f, the epsilons on the x's go up 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n, and the ones on the y, oh sorry, this is at n minus 1. what you were saying, n minus 1, that's right. So the ones on the y's go down, and um, we can just write epsilon i is minus 1 to the greatest integer in i. <coughs> Alpha turns out to be the determinant of the knot, which is the same as delta minus 1. Um, you can get, there's a, a theory also when alpha is even, you can get some links with, I think, you said the relation is xw is wx? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And a similar sort of thing, but let's stick with knots. And if uh, let's see, so k of alpha 1 was the alpha 2 plus 1. And let me note that otherwise, if beta is not equal to 2, okay, so if beta not equal to 1, then uh, these are all hyperbolic I'm going to leave some room. I want to show you some examples. So let me leave the metal board straight, empty here um, for a little while. So what about the reps? Let me be a little bit um, formal. Let's see. Yeah, this is what I wanted. So remember that these SL2C reps Symbolic <coughs> if every meridian goes to a trace two elements, and then these project to parabolic PSL2 representations, and in the hyperbolic case, one of these shows up as the one that gives the uh, hyperbolic structure, discrete faithful rep. 
Okay. And now, let me be a little bit formal. I'll take gamma sub w from the free group on x and y to sl to z bracket w, where w is an indeterminate, x just goes to 1, 1, 0, 1, which I'll call capital X, and y goes to 1, 0, w, 1, which I'll call y, x, so w. SL2 and ZW are matrices that also, they have to have determinant 1. Well, maybe. I guess they do, right? So one. But, yeah, why don't you use it there? Don't you usually, maybe you don't usually use that? I, I, I guess I, I just don't, don't know what it I don't yeah, see yeah. why yeah. not. No, it's, 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 it's fun. I'm just asking what the SL2Z of that yeah, would be as a matrix group. Yeah, it needs to determine one. Actually, why clearly they have to determine one. Right, right. <laughs> you can, you <laughs> it's okay. Can, so you can invert this over Z bracket W. Right? Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah, I thought about that a little bit too. So we have this Wiley polynomial phi alpha beta of W, this is going to be the 1, 1 entry of gamma sub W of capital W, capital W is that word over there, and this is what we call the Wiley polynomial, Wiley just called it the rep polynomial, and then if I let gamma sub omega is gamma sub w followed by evaluation that w equals omega and this is the u of beta and then one checks in a fairly straightforward manner that if you set W equal to a root of the Wiley polynomial, in fact, this relator is going to go to the identity. And so that that induces a representation of the not group. So, gamma omega from pi to S L. And so the image is actually in Z bracket. This omega is rep. I guess uh, when I evaluated here, of course, I didn't have to assume I had a rep, so maybe I should, should have taken that out. Susan, maybe we should say that a lot of this stuff right now is from Riley's paper. This is, yeah, all this stuff is in Riley's Par Parabolic. So up here I don't have to assume we're in the loop. So, yeah, all the stuff is in Riley. Uh, what was it called? Parabolic reps. Parabolic. So to see reps. Most of the things I'm going to say are here. But there's there's one or two errors in the paper. He corrects it. He corrects the parabolic reps too. Yeah. Both. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So Riley showed that every non-abelian parabolic SL to C rep of a two bridge K is conjugate to these. And let's note if omega and omega prime are roots the same irreducible factor, I guess I'll call it phi. There's a problem because I'm going to mention the other phi function briefly, but in our paper we call this phi, so it's uh, phi of uh, 
capital the beta, then these are not conjugate reps, but um, gamma omega prime is tau composed of gamma omega, where tau is a Galois. So these are equivalent representations. In particular, if you have roots of the same factor and one, one of the representations is faithful, so is the other. Although only one of them is going to give the discrete faithful, only one of them will correspond to this geometric structure. So equivalence is not as good as consciousness. Like, I mean, is it obvious that Z of W or W's root just is a Galois or a Galois extension? Well, it's restriction. Q. Oh, yeah, this, well, this, this may not be an automorphic. They push you uh, into uh, another field. That's yeah, maybe I should be working over Q, but it restricts to Z. No, it's, it's okay over Z. But it, is it a Galois extension? That's what I mean. Oh. We'll, we'll look at it. Let's see. I don't think so. Um, Probably not. Let's see. So these are algebraic units. Does that yeah, but it's still not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to just show some uh, examples we computed. Like <coughs> So we did a whole table of these up to alpha. Let's see if this is going to make a shift to this one before. So let me go back to this where I said beta is between 0 and alpha. And this is odd. You can also you can do the same trick and the same formula with 0 less than beta less than alpha over 2, even more odd. And as I've written, we, maybe you can't see it. In fact, I'm afraid this is looking kind of blurry here, so you can't see these too well. But we have that phi alpha, alpha minus beta of w is the same as the P alpha beta of minus W. And so if you only do half of these, um, you basically get all the polynomials. So magnify that anymore. It didn't. Yeah. You're going, it's going in a little, so you want to go the other direction. Yeah. That's big enough. I thought I'd overdone it. That's good. Okay. You only missed the Alright. Great. So let's look at the prime ones first. And one thing to notice is that we're only this is this is prime factorizations of the Riley polynomial factors. I don't know why, why the brackets came out of our algorithm here. Um, so notice we're only finding irreducible ones. We had this conjecture that when alpha is prime, you'll only get irreducible ones. And this is known by Riley when your beta is 1, as a Torres knots. Um, he showed the exact form of the prime factorization. You can see it up here. So let me write down just a few of the properties here. Because these are interesting to play with. Um, so you can see that. Um, Oh, we also have a mathematical program to generate them. Yeah, we have a mathematical program. Sure. It's obvious. It's not very we don't do these by hand. Um, so this is, sorry, this is monic. And degree, uh, let's see, degree is n, which is alpha minus 1 over 2. 
Uh, most of these these things were proved by uh, Riley, the constant coefficient is plus or minus one, and so that means omega is an algebraic unit. Um, and then, let me see if I'm skipping over things that I wanted to note. Um, and uh, so I'll particularly mention Wiley because this one was not trivial. The alpha one has, I also misstated it last time, so I didn't mention this before. It has prime factors of and sorry, this is Euler's speed function, P of D over 2, or D dividing alpha D different from 1. Oh, I forgot the 2 last time. And so you might recall a summation form that the sum of P of D, D divides alpha is equal to what? Theory to alpha. It's alpha. And so if you take away the factor, take d not equal to 1, you get alpha minus 1. And so if you divide by 2, you get degree. And so you have factors of all of these degrees and one, one factor for each degree. So in particular, we have B alpha 1 prime if alpha is prime, it's irreducible. And we had this question, is B alpha beta prime alpha prime? And it's projected up to alpha is 100. So that's interesting. Another thing you might notice here, you can particularly see this for the, the prime ones that I... So notice in the composite case, you see the correct factors of degree 1, 2, and 4 corresponding to phi of d being 2, 4, and 8. Um, you can see that the factorizations for different betas are different. Um, it seems that all of the factors, in fact, so this would be an extension of this prime one, that somehow if you look at the degrees of the factors, you'll see that they correspond to sums of those numbers, one, two, and four, that you're not going to get. If, if that is, if the torus not one factors of degree one, two, and four, you're not going to see a factor of degree five you only see some of those numbers. And that also looks like it's true. But we, we don't have enough examples. There really aren't very many examples like that up to uh, degree, um, up to alpha is 100. Check. The other thing you might notice with these ones that are irreducible, look at the coefficients for all the different betas. Look at the mod 2. They're all identical modulo two, and this is something that Wiley actually showed. So I think we're done with the examples here. Uh, 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 so yeah, I don't think I am. You want to use the thing where I did this play?
Now, if that reduction were prime when alpha is prime, then we would have proved our conjecture because if you factored up above, you couldn't go on to a prime thing by reducing modulo 2. Unfortunately, these are generally reducible even when alpha is prime. Can I add something? Yeah. It, one reason why the conjecture is interesting to us is because if you're not on a torus knot, you're on a hyperbolic knot, and if it's irreducible, then all those reps are faithful. Because if one is faithful, they're all faithful. They're all conjugate roots. And, and, and we know that there's a faithful one because you have a hyperbolic structure. So and, and in fact, um, only one of the irreducible things can correspond to Faithful reps. That's also true. Um, so um, let me say let me say a word about where this comes from, um, because it just because it introduces knot theory stuff. So I if I'm not going too far afield here. I, I think this is interesting. Basically, uh, unfortunately, I've taken my my uh, x's and y's away, so x goes to this capital x, which was 1, 1, 0, 1, and y went to oh, y right. sub omega and w. They're Sorry? They're on the board. Oh, they're on the board over there. That's right. Good. I forgot which side I put them on. So observe that x squared is 1, 2, 0, 1, and y squared, w, whatever, 1, 0, 2, w, 1. And so these are the identity modulo 2. And so the idea, basically, what I have taken away is my group presentation x, y, W x is y w, where w is a bunch of x's and y's with plus and minus ones. And the idea is that if you do reductions modulo 2, these things have even order, so x, x is the same as x inverse, so these all basically reduce to the same group, somehow modulo 2. And in fact, that group is going to be the orbifold group. So this is a, a nice definition to mention. So definition of the orbifold group of any knot K is the group obtained from I, the knot group, by setting the squares of the meridians equal to the identity. This thing is always and always has a uh, over four points. Like it's always going to be in a. Uh, uh, I don't even know. Why is it called? <laughs> That's There's no action. There's no action. Okay. Okay. So for these two bridge knots, we have, well, we're going to have x, y, and x squared and y squared are both the identity. And then this relation, if x and x inverse are the same, this relation looks like x, y, x, y, x, y, a bunch of x's and y's. And it just, you count them up, and you just see that x, y to the alpha is going to be the identity. And you might recognize this. This is just So, in fact, this is completely independent of beta delta the same. Now, if we set R equal to this z bracket omega for some omega that's a root of our um, of our Wiley polynomial. 
then this is isomorphic. We can think of this as z bracket w mod f, where f is. So maybe I should be using v. My apologies to work So v is the irreducible factor of the Riley polynomial that has omega as a group. Okay, so this is a ring item automorphism, and we can set r hat equal to just reduce z mod 2. And so phi hat is just the minus two reduction of phi, which is not necessarily irreducible, but we still have a perfectly good ring here. And so I'm just being a little formal because actually it took me a while to get correctly how this observation gets that all the violet polynomials are the same mod 2 and other stuff that, that Riley gets out of this. So if we have pi going to the orbifold group, we have our gamma omega going down to SL2R. <coughs> and then this ring homomorphism, um, so we just have a ring homomorphism, it's pretty obvious. If I, if I look at it this way, you get an obvious ring homomorphism. And so that reduces the map here, SL to R hat, which pretty clearly is going to factor through. So you get a commutative diagram. And then, and then also, if you're looking at this, now if you're thinking of R as giving you polynomials in W, and then you're modding out by phi, with that point of view, then the Riley polynomial, remember, was just the 1, 1 entry of the image of capital W and the reduced Riley polynomial would be one one entry of the analogous thing here. <coughs> and let me point out that, let's see if I, I think I've been calling this gamma, well maybe I should call it gamma f hat because it only depends on f. Fix an isomorphism down here. Then um, let me just mention. You mean phi there, don't you? Uh, uh, phi, he, he thank changed you. it. To, I apologize for that. Mm. So the image of gamma phi hat has to be some dihedral group of order m, m dividing alpha. And the discrete. The, the faithful reps will have to have m equals alpha, and that's one way um, that you recognize where the faithful ones are. a lot more with this and basically his proof of the factorization and other interesting things come out of this. Some things that come out of this, I, I think I don't have time to go into more of this, but it's, it's in a paper of ours that if you look at the factors of the Riley polynomial when it does factor, you might see that one of those factors is a Riley polynomial for some smaller value of alpha, but in fact at most one of them can be of other interests and things like that. <coughs> so I think this is just kind of a pretty, pretty thing with where the fault that comes in there. And it's an important part of some of the Bible's arguments.
But I think that's all I'm going to do with these. Are there any questions about that before we go on to another topic? Oh, well, sorry, I have to do examples. So this is this is the Wiley polynomials. Um, and so we want to talk about the total reps. Okay, I thought this was, I thought I had. Okay. So up and yet a lot of things obviously work nicely with these factors phi here we would like to get integer polynomials in general if you take the water invariant or these these other invariants like the twisted alexander polynomial or the, the lin invariant we've talked about in general these have coefficients in z bracket omega and we kind of like to have coefficients in C. Um, because of a lot of things we do that have a, a number theoretic feel in some of the dynamics we do, it's very nice to work over Z. And so we had this idea that Dan mentioned before. Um, let P and the irreducible factor of Wiley uh, polynomial and see the companion matrix of B. So let's say the degree of B is capital N, and so this would be an N by N companion matrix, and then we get a gamma sub phi from pi to gl 2n z by setting x to, we just replace those ones by block identity matrices. Actually, SL. SL. Yeah, you're right. Um, And so we call these total reps because we have a proposition that if we look at the twisted polynomial, it's this is true for the for delta, for d, and for w, all of these three twisted invariants. Um, this is true that this total one is the product over the root phi of omega is zero of the twisted polynomials of the gamma second matrix. Um, I was about to make a comment. Oh, um, Wiley noted that the roots are all distinct, so when I write this product, I don't have to worry about multiplicity. They are actually distinct. Um, okay, and so the proof is just to diagonalize um, matrix C to omega 1, omega n, which are the roots. Well, just diagonalize all the blocks over the same basis. You don't change the eyes at all, so everything else stays the same. And then do a reordering of the basis elements to 
to sort of pair things up so that so that um, x is going to go to things with little blocks. One, one, zero, one, dot, 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 and one goes to things. And then you see that this just reduces. So you get basically this is a very reducible rep and reduces to all of these reps on the infinite subspaces. And then we already commented that that you get a factorization. When, when you've got a big uh, N, uh, the computations with mathematical using these big matrices are horrendous. But you can compute the uh, the two by two ones for all the different roots, do it numerically, multiply them together, and then have Mathematica sort of ground and, uh, and reconstruct this gigantic integer polynomial. Man, she gets pretty big examples that way. Yeah, so once you've computed one of these things, then you just replace. You, you compute it in terms of, uh, as a polynomial with this root as one of the variables as it is, and you, you put in the other values for it. So you, put in, you compute with this equal to some double root. Well, just, just change the roots around it. And so it's very computational, and basically you, you get you know, the same information in these two forms. So it doesn't too much matter what you use, but it's just nice to get these um, and let's see, let me mention that for these examples, the relationship between our three polynomials is that delta gamma is the same as the water polynomial because H zero vanishes. You know, we haven't talked formally about that, but that's the reason it is. And then the, the denominator in the water polynomial is going to be T, sorry. Denominator is always T minus one squared because this is just the determinant. X and let's see. It's two capital T, no, it should be two capital M, right? So for the the original ones, it's it's T minus one squared. Um, so this this doesn't depend on what particular Riley polynomial. It just depends on the size because X. so my little thing will be the same thing. And then, I don't know if I should write this as delta or water, since we have water. Um, this is t squared plus one. And let me note that, and maybe I should call it delta. I mean, delta, delta doesn't matter. Delta is more classic. Um, Notice if you evaluate at one, you get two, and if you evaluate at minus one, you also get two. Look at these evaluations, they turn out to be interesting. K53 is the 
figure eight knot. And polynomial, the Miley polynomials, W squared minus W plus one. And let me just write easier. This is going to be uh, t squared minus 4t plus 1 squared. <coughs> if you'll excuse me, I'll leave out my subscripts and say evaluated at 1. We just get 4 and at minus 1 we get 4 times t squared. And one more example, we've been talking about the twist knot. It turns out that K, the 5 2 twist knot, is K73. And the Riley polynomial is W squared, uh, W cubed plus W squared plus 2W plus 1. And the water invariant is, this is a long one, 25t to the 6th minus 104t to the 5th plus 219t to the 4th minus 272t cubed. And this is reciprocal. So the other coefficients are just mirror image of these. So this is this is the middle coefficient. Next one would be two by t t squared, etc. And while the polynomial of one is eight and minus one is eight times eleven. a lot more examples, we notice that this just turns out to be the degree, 2 to the degree of our polynomial, in this case degree 1, here degree 2, here degree 3. So the degree of the, the factor of a lot of polynomial. And W of minus 1 seems to be that same value times a square. One of these is a theorem, the second one is a conjecture. So this one, um, so for K2 bridge, and again we the total. You don't, you don't have to use the whole Riley polynomial. You can just, you can just use uh, for the total rep. You can just use any factor or several factors. So, so it's, right. Yeah, I said I, I'm really doing an irreducible. But just irreducible. When I say the total rep, isn't that what we're calling the total rep, or we're using the polynomial? Yeah, yeah of total. Get our terminology straight. Yeah. Proof lots of. Calculations. Um, this took really quite a bit of messing around to get this. Um, and so we don't know any way that comes from just the combinatorial definition here. Um, we don't know any way that it doesn't use just a lot of messing around with. Yeah, the, the analogous result for the classical polynomial that value oh, yeah. of 1 is 1 is, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is mentioned in this. Easy. Classical delta of 1, an absolute value is 1. And in a way, you can think of this as saying that the order of the homology of the one-fold 
quenched, a quenched cyclic cover it is one. Basically, when you evaluate at a root of unity, an R root of unity, you're getting homology of R fault branch cyclic cover. You're getting order of that homology. And so in this case, the one-fold branch cyclic cover is just S3. So what you're saying is that you get a homology sphere. OK, so the question is whether this has any sort of topological meaning. And then the second one is a conjecture. We thought we'd gotten it with Holman, but it kind of fell apart. Our conjecture is that if we, uh, sorry, gamma sub phi at minus one is that same value, two to the degree phi times, what did we use? And I guess it's pretty, we pretty much figured out where you get a factor of two to the degree phi coming out of this. Basically, if you take the quotient minus one by one, the question is how do you show that that's, that's a uh, square? Do you have any idea what the Q's are? Yes. That's oh, so that's a question. That's, that's, that's another it. question. <laughs> okay, so Morisugi and Hirasawa have proved this in the special, in a very special case. such a thing and, and they do exist, then you can pull back this representation. And since this is a parabolic, well you can you can do this before you pass to the total twisted one. So I, I shouldn't um, I shouldn't have the I should have it 2C here. Sorry. Since I've gotten Omega here. This is another parabolic one, so you can pull it back. It's going to be some gamma omega. And then take the twisted, you take the total rep corresponding to that, gamma sub phi, over here. And then the special case is for these gamma sub phi. They've proved that you get 2 to the 3 phi times q squared. So you need not only a, uh, now this, this epimorphism. We require that it takes bridge generators, these, this pair of bridge generators to the bridge generator. So that's even more special, a special kind of not group epimorphism. And then this has to be the uh, this has to be the lift of this particular representation down here. So it's not in particular, it's not going to ever be a faithful representation. The, in some ways, less interesting ones, I think, on top. So. So, this kind of Okay. Um, I never have time to do 
do what I thought I'd have time to do. So I guess if we turn that back on, I could do just one more example, which is why I was scared or not. And it looks like I didn't get to the net of billion things I needed to do, which was kind of huge. Yes? That special case also came from that Sorry? Is that special case for the conjecture? That's um, let's see, did they show that Q was odd? Uh, I don't think so. Because when we made the more general conjecture, we're seeing it in other cases as well. Um, and we said we thought Q might be odd. I think we're seeing he said he wasn't so sure about that. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that they showed Q was odd. The paper is very long. Yeah. Yes, this, 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 paper, this paper is not only long, but extremely formal. There'll be a theorem that's conditions I, one, 1 through 12 or something like that. And it's like each, each of 1 through 12 follows from the other by a couple of steps. But you'll just have theorem after theorem that has parts 1 through, one through 8, 1 through 13, and so on. So it's, it is a little hard to read. Um, so this is one more, this is something Dan wanted to do and didn't get around to doing, so it's just a short thing of pictures to show you, I might as well left. Okay, so this is what Wiley said was his favorite knot, and a lot of what's interesting about it is that it kind of disguises itself as the square knot, which I'll, I'll show you also. So the square knot is the connect sum of the right hand and left hand trefoil knot. These are very hard to tell apart. All the abelian invariants are the same for them. Um, so Riley is not has some interesting properties. One is that it's fibered. Another is that it's doubly spliced. And that means the following thing. Let's draw our knot schematically lying here inside S3. And now let's put it inside a four ball. Inside B4, it not only bounds a properly embedded disk, let's call this V1, it embeds two of them, one on yes. each side. Yes. Yes. Sorry? I'm just having this asking. Okay, so if you look at D1 union over the knot of D2, this just gives you actually an S. S2, sorry. And is, four. is an arbitrary knot connect sum with its mirror image doubly sliced? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it has this the square knot in any um, knot connect sum. Its mirror image has this property, but this is not a knot of that form. Nonetheless, has this doubly sliced property that sees anything else. So. Um, the fibration, so this is unknotted in, so it's just nice to put this in S4. And the fiber actually extends across, the fibering extends across both this complement. Yeah, so the you know. fibering extends. Right. And the relation to the square knot is that um, these are S equivalent. Let's, we'll not go into this, but uh, it shares a cipher um, with um, square knot. And so the classical invariant T is the uh, determinant of TV minus V transpose, where V is a cipher form, and so they have the same 
classical polynomial, but basically all the abelian invariants of the same. So there are various ways of telling these apart, but not very easy ones. So, um, well, if you use the Jones polynomial. You can use the Jones polynomial. Yeah. Yes, the Jones polynomial tells them apart before that. Um, there, yes, let me say there, there are a family of knots that, that are obtained from the square knot by twisting, uh, do, doing one over in surgery on a curve that comes from a push off of the cipher from the cipher surface, but it's a curve that's not homologous in the cipher surface. And so you're doing surgery on something that can't see the cipher point. And so uh, it, it turns out though that it's hyperbolic and it's and its monodromy uh, has a has a positive. Uh, Pseudo also constant. So, okay, so, so that's one way yeah. to tell if it's yeah. monitored. It's tough to do. Part of it. Well, what property did you say had with respect to the cipher surface? Oh, you, you, you push off a curve that's not monitored in the surface. Yeah, that's unknotted in S3. Um, and do stalics twists on that curve. One over in surgery. To get this knot and a whole thing. So it's in the concave curve you do surgery on, it's in the concave or separate. So that's what. Uh, Second concave. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's what the that's kind of thing Cochran does. So you did a lot of stuff. You did this stuff way back in 92. Yes. So um, here's a particular. Uh, um, representation that Riley found of this knot. So for any, we, you actually have a whole parameters worth of representations for any complex number. This gives a non-abelian parabolic representation. And interestingly, no matter what W is, when you twist, when you compute the um, WADA, twisted WADA invariant, you get exactly the same. So this is not something Riley did. People weren't twisting yet. Okay, so this is a computation. I guess we, we did this computation. It's very interesting that it doesn't depend on the parameter W. See, the T squared plus 1 is the, is the, the 1 upon any other trip for it. It's showing up here as a, as a factor. Okay, and now Remember the game, if we want to use a polynomial to distinguish two knots, we have to look at a whole, whole basket of representation. Well, again, using Wiley's normal form, you can see this, this actually, this knot is going to have a three generator presentation. I just picked out three meridians. There was that knot at the top. And so you can the first two, you can always conjugate to the form for these two bridge knots that you've been using. And while we showed that the third generator, you can conjugate to something of that last form as other parameters u and v. Um, so a little checking with the identities. You'll see that w has to be minus 1, and u has to be plus or minus 1 or 0. And then you check some cases. If u is plus or minus 1, no matter what v is, you get this polynomial. And if you take u equal to 0, you find that v has to be 1, and you get this polynomial. And now let's see if I can get all of our polynomials on the same <coughs> sheet. You see that none of the polynomials in this basket. And so, in fact, we have to have actual numbers here. To get the untwisted trefoil polynomial down the bottom, if there's some sort of invariant uh, subspace, it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have the same factors showing up, especially with the two that I have above the first two there. So they, those two are so close. We had, we just, Dan was doing the computations mainly, but he kept checking this over and over again because they looked so close that he's really afraid he made a mistake. And, you know, when you make the lot invariant, you have to check the denominator and make sure you've got the denominator right. And, you know, did 
some of those terms cancel out, but it turns out they just don't match. So this is a way to use twisted polynomials to distinguish those. Okay, so that's enough. We were talking about connect sum yesterday, and now it seems that Treplo is back in here. Is there maybe like a subtangle notion, mm -hmm. sort of that you know, like the trefoil appearing in it? Is there a way to sort of embed uh, WADA polynomials mm -hmm. of smaller knots into larger ones in some mm -hmm. this way? Good question. I mean, if you had a tangle, well, I don't know, a representation of a tangle that you could extend. Um, I mean, if if you know we had some box yeah. where we took out maybe the trefoil in this picture and then put in the figure eight or I mean something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, behave so well. Tangles have a So well, you've written a paper so not about talk, this, but other, a, like the Jones Palm Right, right. What's that called? Um, oh, uh, uh, What's yeah. the no geometric notion called? Uh, certain. So this is like related to the work of David Krebs right. and the idea of, of yeah, what's the term? Uh, <laughs> persistent. 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 Tangles. Persistent. Persistent. Tangles. Tangles. Yes. I don't know. That's a good question. Can you, can you, can you infect? Uh, some twisted Alexander polynomial with some factor by, by putting in a tangle properly. Um, uh, right, so in other words, if you have a tangle and a knot, and there's some variant of it that must show up in any knot that has this as a sub thing, that, that would be called the persistent property, I guess. Yeah. There's a student of uh, Peter Shalin named David Krebs who, who, who wrote a thesis that showed that, in some sense, the determinant. Um, um, I think if you, if, I think what he proved, if I remember correctly, is that if you had a tangle, of, uh, just a four, four end tangle, and not, you could close it up in two different ways: numerator and denominator of closure. And you look at the determinants of those knots or links you get, and you take the GCD of that number. Then, I think, if I remember correctly, I think that has to show up as a factor in the in the determinant of the thing in which it was embedded. And so, and so if that's non-trivial, then that tangle will not embed in a trivial knot. So that it's possible to draw some sort of yeah. tangle yeah. and just know from these invariants that you can't connect up the ends in such a way that you get the trivial. And so yeah. Susan and I and Joseph Jatinsky did something extending that a little bit with, with uh, uh, Kaufman polynomial so, uh, uh, what you can do there. But it's skin here. Some stuff so, in virtual yeah. You could yeah. sort of look at this sort of like uh, analogous to the Froge and the Tunney for Kids Kaiji for The Frojo American? Frojo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anyway, in other words, what you could do is, I mean, you might be able to get other results or, or similar. You have a, you know, you take the Kaufman, and you have the two sphere with four points, and, and give them some color or something, and, and and then you have a basis for the skin module of the X sphere and skin module, and so so you look at the I, you have your tangle, and then you look at the ideal generated by the, the some invariant um, of some linear invariant of the uh, outside. You have a basis for the scheme on the outside. And so you do a calculation. Is, is the route not prime? Oh, yeah. Which it's what hyperbolic. What a. Uh, what is the material on the table? It's uh, nine. What? It's 11 crossing? I think it's 11 crossing. I don't know what it, what it is. Yeah, it's eight, eight, nine, seven, eight, 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 eight. Is it 11? Yes. Yeah. 
that we can do this so many ways. Yeah, Riley, what Riley says it has a remarkable confluence of properties, or a confluence of remarkable properties. <laughs> It shows up in parabolic ref one. It gives it as an example of here's a parabolic ref you can get. It's not the unique. I'm going to turn the light off here.